I really don't think characters can get away with outcasting a protagonist or downplaying them because they can simply end up doing this. <laughs> That's right, today's epic video will compile a list of 10 anime protagonists who get downplayed by everyone, but they turn out to be overpowered. If you are new around here, then please make sure that you subscribe to the channel notifications bell icon turned on to stay up to date with the latest anime news and recommendations right at your doorstep. Now, without keeping me all waiting, let us begin with the video. Starting this list off with Unlimited Psychic Squad. When I first watched this series, I originally thought, oh, you know, it's just another anime with cool guys and girls using superpowers and flying around like Superman wannabes. Of course, that was before I watched its parent story, Zetai Karen Children, but more so, it was before I fully embraced the spin-off known as Zetai Karen Children, the Unlimited Hyubo Kiyosuke. This new piece of work that Studio Man Globe is presenting here could be defined as their latest line in their evolution of supernatural phenomenon. In fact, Zetai Karen Children, the Unlimited, takes supernatural with a world of superpowers and transforms it into a profound psychic tale. It's fast-paced with lots of action scenes, sarcastic moments, sad moments, pretty much everything that you could ask for. Next up on the list we have is Build Divide Code Black, a story about redemption, master and teacher, teacher and student, finding your path. <laughs> As cliche as all that sounds, to be honest, Bill Divide Code Black excelled in executing great storytelling behind those ideas. Toto is the lovable and fun main character whom the viewers can't help but, you know, just constantly laugh at how awkward and funny his manners are. He definitely is a great protagonist for quite an underrated series adapted from a game. Having lost part of his memory and personality, all he can think about really is the king and finding his path towards that. As a result, he has lost the ability to function as a normal human and for whatever reason, reason develops a hilarious obsession with bread as well. Blasted into a digital city, he wakes up and takes shelter in a tent by a river, battling his way to the top to earn enough chips to fight the king, the greatest player of all time. That's all he knows and strives for, and he could care less for anything else. <laughs> I think the best way to define the story of 07 Ghost is not bad, and it's a fairly interesting story about friendship and vengeance, and had its fair share of comedy and touchy moments, which are the kind of things I personally like in an anime. This is a bit of an older show that aired back in 2009 and created by Studio Dean, though truly, back in the days, this anime had great art and also animation. The protagonists and, you know, also side characters were pretty likable and fun to follow on their adventure with cool superpowers. <laughs> It's fairly straightforward to be honest, and even though you might find many complaining about how all of this has been done before, and yes, that may be the case, but some are better than others, and in this case, I'd go out with saying 07 Ghost is up there with one of the better ones. This is a very underrated series after all, and I recommend checking this one out. An exciting synopsis that led people's expectations to fall deep down into what is a disappointment. However, the series does have quite a lot of enjoyment from, you know, its badass fights and also the main protagonist, but that might not help factor in all the issues it does have. The anime is called Magical Warfare. <laughs> You would think that a studio such as Madhouse would actually make an insanely good anime since they are fairly popular as a studio, but alas, even big studios can, you know, make bad anime. The pacing, in my opinion, is just not all that great. The series will have an episode, you know, with a battle and then an episode with an explanation. You know, all that explaining is extremely annoying though. Sure, I like knowing what is going on, but usually the explanations have 
absolutely nothing to do with whatever the event is occurring at the moment, and will still leave me several unanswered questions as to what exactly happened. <laughs> I definitely enjoyed Infinite Dendrogram. Well, I will start saying that this anime is actually quite underrated, heavily underrated actually. Not saying it's amazing because it's not, but it's definitely getting a lot of hate even though it's actually quite decent. The great story with tons of unique concepts and massive amount of potential from the world that has been built. Art is good enough to hold your attention without being the main appeal of the anime. Characters are all, you know, expressive without being dreadfully bland archetypes. Interaction between the characters is very pronounced. There's comedy and seriousness in their rightful places, so there's no mood killing at all. It was quite a wild ride from start to finish. Each episode keeps amping up the experience by making use of the of the Nieto MMO concepts and great characterization that stands above other MMO anime. <laughs> Usually generic anime are quite bad, but in all honesty, I watch a lot of bad anime and still enjoy them when others don't. But this is quite different for some reason. There are generic anime that end up being quite different than your average generic anime. But why Tsugumomo? Why does Tsugumomo do better than others, at least slightly better. Now, the power source of the anime is quite unique from anything I've ever seen, or at least I haven't seen overpowered blankets of cleansing as something you could fight with. I don't know how to refer to the evil source of weird things happening around Kazuya the protagonist, so I'll just refer to them as, you know, some sort of evil spirits that manifest or take control of people and their desires. Studio Zero G had done a great job with this anime, and with two seasons in total, there is a lot to enjoy from watching this anime. Shokugeki no Soma Food Wars, one of my all-time favorite shonen anime series that I have watched, and this one focuses on cooking battles. Yukihira Soma, the main protagonist, quirky, funny, but also badass at the same time, a protagonist who strives to become the greatest chef by joining a prestigious cooking academy, the toughest and challenging school, to show his skills at the chance of grabbing one of those elite tent seats. He gets heavily underestimated by so many people, but many just do not know or do not realize that Soma is the son of a former elite member who trained him for this very moment. Of course, all great anime have to come to an end because Food Wars did end a while back and it will always be one of the greatest shonen anime everyone needs to watch. Beast Tamer is a brand new anime that is currently airing and it heavily falls into today's video topic of a protagonist belittled and getting kicked out of the hero's party for being seemingly too weak at the start. <laughs> Now, beast teamers are usually seen as weak classes, simply only being able to tame monsters and creatures while not putting much of a fight. Thus, he was treated as a nobody at all. I didn't expect it to be really unique and an interesting show. I knew it was going to be a generic fantasy, harem slice of life show with the path it's taking, but it's extremely well done and entertaining at the same time. It doesn't hide anything in what it's trying to accomplish and stays honest with the audience, and I think you guys will find this to be a very enjoyable series to watch. <laughs>
The story of Kikai Sensen is not very complex. It can be simply put as, you know, just an organization of superpowered people fighting against this order in New York, which has now turned into a supernatural zone between the underworld and also the real world. What makes the story so good, however, is the execution. The way it goes about episode by episode is definitely not textbook monster of the week type predictable battles, but, you know, where they have to simply find some weakness that was only apparent to the main character. <laughs> There really is a lot of variety to the show, which I'm very happy to say, and it's also made by Studio Bones, one of the best studios currently in the anime industry, as they always provide quality. Now finally to end this list off, I'm recommending to you all is Reincarnated as a Sword, another newly airing anime which falls into the isekai genre of a guy getting sent to another world and reincarnates as a powerful sword. <laughs> Desperately in search for someone to wield him, this is a story of a duo, a sword and a member of the Black Cat tribe who become adventurers, climb the ranks, slay monsters and save the day from disaster. Of course, Fran, the female protagonist, is heavily underestimated because she's only a child and extremely low rank, but with the help of her sword, she can defeat tougher enemies and prove those who doubted her. Definitely a very cool isekai series for you all to check out. You just made it to the end of the video and witnessed 10 anime protagonists to get downplayed by everyone, but they turn out to be overpowered. If I've managed to leave any anime out in particular that you thought would be a great issue on the list, then please let me know in the comment section down below as I'd love to hear your very own opinion, or just comment down below what you thought about the video in general as I always appreciate the feedback. So enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be seeing you all in the next one.